CC families as to hear again. Now, last Sunday, we talked about the story of the lost son, which was the parable that Jesus told to the people during his time. And if you guys remember, a parable is simply a story that has a lesson or a meaning in it. And in this case, the story that Jesus told, it was all about forgiveness. Now, if you recall, forgiveness is deciding that somebody who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. And so this story talks all about forgiveness and love. And in the story, there was a father who had two sons. And if you recall, the younger son decided that he would ask his father for his inheritance. And he decided to run away and spent all of his money um, having fun and partying with his friends. And he got to this point where he didn't have any money left. And so he was forced to work on a farm, feeding pigs to earn a living. And yet, even though he did that, he still didn't have nearly enough food to fill his belly. He was starving at the time. And so he decided that he would go home and that he would beg his father to at least let him be a servant in the family household. But if you recall, as the son was walking home, his father spotted him from a long ways off, and he ran up to his son, and he greeted him with joy. And the son begged his father and asked him if he would at least let him stay as a servant, and the father decided that he didn't want that. He wanted his son to be returned to his rightful place in the house and not to be some lowly servant. And so the father was so overjoyed to finally have his son back that he decided to throw a party. And that's where our story leaves us today and where we're going to pick off. But the story that Jesus was telling, he was telling it to a group of people called the Pharisees. And if you guys recall, the Pharisees were the religious leaders at the time, and they dedicated their whole lives to reading God's word and to following the law as closely as they possibly could, because they believed that by doing so, they could be good people, right? And so they actually thought that they were good because they followed the law so well. And that also meant that they saw people who didn't follow the law as being not as good. And yet Jesus spent his whole entire ministry being friends with people who the Pharisees saw as not good enough. And so the Pharisees, not only did they focus on trying to follow the law themselves, but they also would go around telling people and correcting others who they saw were not following the law. And so the Pharisees were not very good at forgiving others, right? They thought, they thought that because other people didn't follow the law, that they didn't deserve to be forgiven. But that wasn't Jesus' message. And Jesus believed that everybody deserved to be forgiven, right? And he wanted us to also be able to forgive others in our lives. But the story didn't end with the lost son coming home. It actually continues, and that's where we're going to pick off today. So if you would follow along the story of the lost son. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. When Jesus wanted to share something important, he often told a story to explain what he meant. Now one day the religious leaders were grumbling because Jesus chose to bring in outcasts and people who did things wrong. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew their hearts. These men thought they were better than everyone else. So he told them the story of a man and his two sons. Now the youngest son asked for his share of his father's money and he took off. He spent his money on parties and all other stuff. But then the money ran out and he ended up at a miserable job feeding pigs while he himself starved. Desperate, the young son returned home, planning on begging for mercy and working as a servant. Instead, 
His father welcomed him with open arms and even planned a party for his lost son in his honor. Ultimately, it seemed like a happy ending. But Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. If Jesus were to tell that story to us today, it might sound something like this. The older brother, let's call him Will. He spent the entire day working hard, perhaps plowing up the packed dirt on a brand new field. Come on, Bessie, just one more row. <sighs> Gotta finish before the light goes. As the sun slipped behind the hill, Will finished breaking the dirt on his last long row. I just need some water and a quiet meal and bed. Will trudged slowly back to the house and left Bessie in the barn with a bag of oats. If my slacker brother hadn't run off, I wouldn't have to work so hard. As Will neared the house, he was surprised to see the lights blazing from every window. What is going on? Will stopped, trying to make sense of all the activity and the music. Then the back door opened. One of the servants stepped outside to throw out a bowl of scrap. And she turned to go back inside. Wait. The servant paused. What's happening? It's just the party for your brother. The what for my what? You haven't heard? Your brother showed up this afternoon. Your dad had the fattest calf killed and roasted to celebrate. He is so thankful Jake's safe. A party? My dad is throwing a party? I'll let the family know you're back. What? No, no, I am not coming in. The servant wrinkled her nose. Whew. You want someone to run you a bath first? Leave me alone. The servant hurried back inside. Will paced as his exhaustion vanished and anger coursed through his veins. I work all day, every day. Has dad ever thrown a party for me? Will stalked back and forth, fuming as the back door opened up again. His father hurried out. Will, here you are. Well, look at that. You decided to remember I exist. Your brother is back. He's okay. Well, that is just fantastic. We're all celebrating, but it's not complete without you. Come on inside. Will turned and looked directly at his father, eyes blazing. All these years, I've worked non-stop for you. I've done every single thing you asked, and you never even given me a goat to have a party with my friends. You never said you wanted. This son of yours runs away with your money and wastes it like a fool. Then he shows up, and you roast a fatted calf and throw a giant shindig. Will's father sighed, took a deep breath, and looked Will directly in the face. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead for all we knew, and now he's alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. <sighs> Look, I'm real tired. I plowed the entire North Field. Well, thank you. I think I'll just go to bed. Won't you come into the party? Just for a few minutes. Will hesitated. He could see the people through the window, dancing, eating, full of joy. The light and the music called them. Please, Will. We don't know if the older brother ever listened to his father. We don't know if he ever forgave his younger brother. We don't know if he chose to go and enjoy the party. But what we do know is that if he stayed outside, he missed out on many good things. So as we saw in the story, the father was so overjoyed to have his son back that he decided to throw a huge party in celebration. And yet then we have the older son who's been working so hard, probably harder because the younger son had left. And so he's been working all day long. And when he comes home and sees that they're throwing a party, he's not as overjoyed to have his brother back. As the father is. Instead, he's actually angry. 
he's a little bit resentful and bitter because he's been working hard this whole time and his father never threw him a party. Now, I don't know how many of you guys can relate to that. I know that I've definitely been in that place myself where sometimes it's hard to be overjoyed even though we have something to celebrate because we're so focused on our own bitterness and we're so focused on how we never receive that same kind of attention and yet what we saw from the story is that the older son the only one that he's hurting is himself by choosing not to forgive his brother and by choosing to hold on to his resentment instead of celebrating with everyone else he's actually missing out on the party and we don't know if he ever goes inside to celebrate with his family or not we don't know but we do know that we have the chance to be better than him, right? We have the chance to take that opportunity to celebrate when we have something to celebrate and to not hold on to that bitterness or that resentment or that anger that we might feel over someone else receiving celebration, over somebody else receiving something that maybe we don't think they deserve. And instead of thinking, I deserve that, we have the chance to join them in celebration. So. I want you guys to remember this week that when you choose not to forgive others, the only one who's missing out is you. But we have the opportunity to choose forgiveness, and we have the opportunity to, to choose joy. And so I invite you to join me this week in looking for opportunities that we have to celebrate the good things with others, because I think we all need a little bit more joy in our lives. We all need something to celebrate. And so I want you to look for the little opportunities to celebrate, even if you don't feel like um, you don't feel like celebrating. Uh, I want to encourage you to put aside your own hesitations and to embrace those opportunities to celebrate with the people around us. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.